All right, so carrying on with the uh, wheelhouse aft bulkhead. Uh, we talked about this before. Um, this is an actual mahogany veneered plywood, unlike some of the other locations, the forward bulkhead, for instance. So that veneer is not coming off, and it also can't be saved due to some pretty significant damage here. So I have another solution for this, which we'll talk about later. Up here, this is not original. This is something really thin, I suspect. It's actually door skin, which is, I talked about it before, a Luan or Marenti type of uh, mahogany, very, very thin plywood. Um, as you can see, some spruce plywood in there, which is part of the whole repair that went on up in here, which I've already talked about. Anyway, so this has got to come off, which means this piece has got to come off. Again, I don't know what you'd call this. It's a nicely uh, arched uh, beam type thing, although all it really is is trim because it's only held on with finish nails. I do not believe it's original, um, but, uh, well, it's possible that it is. It just, it's hard to say exactly uh, uh, what function it serves, basically because this surface is on the same plane as this surface. You'd think that this would just go straight up. Anyway, it's coming off, so I can get this off. I'll learn more about it. Um, and then uh, we have some other repairs to do over there. Let's go. Okay, let's go. This should be pretty uh, easy for the old wrecking bar. Uh, there's a little room in at the top already. Point. There we go. And like everything else on the boat, as soon as I remove it, I suddenly have a storage problem. Actually, that looks like nice mahogany in there. This might resemble original. Anyway, I'll learn more about it when I really, really check the part. As usual, we have to listen to the airplanes fly over here in Victoria Harbor. Okay, so. Even though these are on the same plane, I guess I can see why they didn't make it as one service originally. Uh, because of course you have the um, aft cabin roof plywood here and uh, some other materials. This wouldn't be original. This is probably all part, that's epoxy for the fiberglass shower enclosure which is in there. Quite a lot of work went on in here. Um, Anyway, we'll do a little more digging and poking and see if this is all structural put back and uh, start with this thing in the corner, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Okay, well, we can carry on with this little veneer here. This will probably just pop off. I actually cat's pawed out a couple of the tiny little nails at the top, but it's hardly worth it because the stuff is so weak and the nails are so tiny. This will just pull off relatively easily. There you go. And uh, that certainly does expose a repair. There's some old Douglas fir ply, which would have been original and all this nasty spruce and bits of old pine and junk is what it was repaired with when something happened in here, which I can only assume was water damage because it's a kind of a prone quarter for water, water damage. Um, but who knows, maybe it was a fire. I, I kind of doubt it. Um, actually, <laughs> the electrical entry is right there. The 110 shore power? Nah. Anyway, who knows? Let's keep digging. Take some more stuff off here. up to kind of show you some more damage here. All right, so even over on this side, um, there's been repairs. This is more that strange, I don't know, fiberglass board or whatever. The same stuff as we have here. I still haven't looked it up. Simmons, maybe? Uh, perhaps some of you know what this product is. Anyway, so there has definitely been some repairs done in here. And look at this, an old beaver lumber uh, price tag, $9 and, or $4 and 90 cents or something. <laughs> that wasn't for a sheet of plywood, I'm sure it must have been an off cut. Anyway, um, I'll try to assess how good these repairs are. I know that these pieces are not original and they're there um, to fix some rot at the end of the cabin, uh, cabin sides. If they're tidied up, they look sort of okay. Uh, on the other side, uh, this one is also in, it's a bit hacked at the top, not done too well. The other problem is it stopped at the top of the old cabinet that was here. 
So if I move this bin just slightly here, um, there's the shore power inlet. Anyway, so this one's got to come off and be extended down to here because right now it stops right at this crack in the cabin side, making that, well, not ideal. But uh, so I'll just replace that with another piece of uh, sapele or something similar. Okay, let's keep taking stuff apart. Okay, so I'm going to take this corner piece out. Uh, I have to point the camera only into the dark corner because as soon as you see this lightness out here, you'll never see anything in here. Anyway, um, this piece again has got to come out and because it's screwed from the backside underneath another piece of wood that's screwed to the outside and plugged, there's no way I can get to the screws. So I'm going to split it open into pieces with a chisel and break it apart leaving the screw heads exposed much like these ones are down here and then I'll just, uh, not the screw heads, the screws themselves and then I'll just grind them off with my grinder and put a new piece on screwing it and plugging it from this side. Anyway, let's get to it. I won't video this because I can't really put the camera anywhere suitable. Sure. Okay, so that really was one of the most miserable little pieces of, of anti-carpentry I've ever conducted. Um, that wood is strong and it was epoxied to the last edge. Again, I don't know if you can see this because of the light of the um, original cabin sides. So that really came off hard, including uh, taking out a little bit of a divot here which I'll have to fix up. Anyway, so I'll grind all these screws off and uh, sand that out before I put a new piece of uh, sapelli that'll go all the way down. Anyway, again, I'm not sure you can see all that. I'm not even sure I want to show it to you. Ugh. Anyway, it's not bad, really, it's not bad. Cheers. Okay, another thought. Um, I hope you can see this because of course it's dark inside and bright outside but anyway this little window is the only way to see backwards in this entire wheelhouse and uh, when you're driving especially with the helm position to port uh, looking out for boats that have right away over you over there I'm constantly having to run over to that window uh, to be able to see anything there is if I find it over here amongst all the junk a portable that goes in that tiny hole in the back bulkhead here. Well, I don't think that's original. Uh, somehow I can't imagine a boat with super lightweight super structure and these sliding windows uh, could ever justify a solid porthole uh, here where there's not much chance of any serious green water coming in. So I'm removing it and I'm putting a much larger window for much larger visibility and more ventilation. Uh, also a little easier to hand uh, T up to the helmsman at the upper helm, um, which is right there, which is much too big. Uh, we'll go upstairs and have a look and I'll show you why. So I'm going to reduce the size of the upper helm so that I can put a much larger window here. It's going to be 10 inches high by 36 inches wide and uh, I'm going to make the window with a mahogany frame and uh, sliding tempered glass. Maybe not tempered, but hardened anyway. Anyway, um, just finished designing it and I'm pretty excited about it now. I just gotta build it. See ya. Okay, let's get to it. I'm looking forward to this. Okay, so what I've neglected to tell you is that I've decided to make some major changes to the forecastle and in fact to the entire bulkhead between the forecastle and the wheelhouse. I'm going to move the companionway which is now centered in the uh, in the access to the forecastle over to starboard by 12 inches. That's for a couple of reasons. One is because I'd like to change the port side berth, uh, which is directly opposite where I'm working now, um, so that it could be larger, widen it to an almost double size. Of course, it'll be sort of like a, a V berth because it's pointy at the bow end, but it'll be wider actually than a double at the aft end. And on the starboard side, I'll have reduced the amount of room, but I won't put a berth back there. I'm going to build a little nav station, actually, and um, you'll see a mock-up of that in a little bit. And then in the wheelhouse, where I've um, changed the, you know, the dynamics of the space on the port and starboard side, I'm actually going to move the helm from the port side to the starboard side, as all new boats have and I'm doing that for a couple of reasons some are space planning um, and some are safety because um, boats must give way to other vessels on their starboard side and I found it rather difficult to see them I might have mentioned that earlier because of my tiny back window but just being able to sit on the starboard side of the boat and look back I'm feeling a little more comfortable um, 
also I intend to do a lot of uh, canal and possibly lock um, transits with this boat and I think it'll be a lot easier if I'm on the starboard side. It means my new helm will be significantly smaller. It'll have to fit in a, in a relatively small part of the bulkhead but the upside of that is on the port side I now have a rather big section of bulkhead for some of my um, uh, seating that I'm going to put there. Anyway, let's uh, return to our regular scheduled programming. Well, it's done. Holy moly. Um, there are a lot of bits of wood in here. Unbelievable. Um, there is a fraction of what I took out of here. Uh, layers and layers and layers of generations of uh, interior whatever. Again, this bulkhead had a thin mahogany ply over it. Uh, this piece I can't get out, but I will. Uh, as well as this did. So it's really easy to get rid of the nasty wallpaper because it's only affixed to the ply which was only held on by a few nails and not glued amazingly enough. Um, on the whole I'm really really pleased. Uh, the um, sole as I knew would extends far enough over. Uh, this is the potential cut line that's one foot over and so you, you can see that I still have a flat floor um, at the bottom of the companionway. Uh, but it does mean that it's a very small area for a little nav station, but that's really all I'm looking for because I'd like to have a good sized um, berth over on this side and again room for a big uh, bench at the end of the dinette in there. Anyway, in terms of the structure of the boat, you can see as we work our way down the uh, galvanized clinch nails start to get a little more distressed. Up here they're, they're perfect. Here they're not bad. Here we're starting to see some uh, deterioration as we get down and down and down and then from this stringer down these are actually a bit punky. Uh, someone's actually added some sort of cheap little sister things. They'll come out and they'll do something better than that. But as we go aft it gets a little uglier. Now uh, this boat is interesting in that it has a bit of a hard chine that starts right here. Basically um, the bottom of the hull comes up and it's a perfect curve up until here, these ribs are a perfect curve. But from this rib back, there's a fold. And in fact, it just gets sharper and sharper and sharper. And as by the time you get to the stern, it's about 80 degrees. Um, what they do with the ribs back there is run the ribs at a more gentle curve and have another clamp or another stringer on the outside of the ribs um, with some fairing pieces to deal with that. But right here is the biggest problem. I've seen this rib before and I knew it was broken. And the rib behind it is fine for some reason, but this one, even though it had the structure of the bulkhead to help it, you can see it's pulled away from the bulkhead and this stringer is broken and it's moved out almost half an inch. Um, so simply putting a sister in here isn't going to solve the problem. I'm going to have to do something a little more severe in here eventually. I'm not going to worry about it right now because I don't have the means and well, the boat's in the water. So what I'm going to do, anything I build in here has to be able to come out again very easily and quickly so that uh, next haul out I can do some work in here. And I'm going to have to sister um, basically all these ribs from about this stringer down and I'll pull the sole up down probably to the keel. And hopefully I'll be able to drive them in on this angle, this will come out underneath that stringer and, uh, and then fasten them from the outside. Not really too daunting, but not ideal. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that for now because on the whole, I'm prepared to deal with stuff like that. Let's just uh, keep this boat livable. Cheers. Okay, here we go. set the blade shallow because I don't want to cut through the nails and the beams here. All right, I could just tidy that up with the fine tool and uh, actually I can overcut it a little bit because I'm going to cover it in here. I'm going to put the saw through the windshield, Peter. Happily I didn't cut this wire because I set it nice and low. Okay, well we'll just have to see how we can remove this beam. I think it's just nailed. Real easily. Big nail. 
scales. Serious nails. Okay. I now have, huh, I now have half a screw. That wouldn't have been too easy on the blade. I don't know if you can see that. What a perfect cutaway. Half a screw, half a plug. Couldn't do better. All right. I won't be closing the other side in uh, for a little bit. I have something ambitious planned for a new hatch. I'll get onto that later. Okay, let's tidy this up. Wow. Big hole. Okay, so in, well, a couple of hours, I was able to create a relatively tidy little nav station in here. Of course, this is all mocked up. It's not real, uh, but it's usable in the meantime. Basically, uh, a bench that's also angled, so it's not parallel with the um, bulkhead, but more likely parallel with the side of the boat. Works out quite well. Nice little place for the computer. Bigger desk than I even thought. Uh, this will be a hanging locker. In fact, I'll probably put a rod in here in, even in the temporary sense. Put a little shelf up for the computer up there. Works very neatly. I love this relationship with the porthole. I really, really think it's great. Um, little step, and of course I'll work that all out. But on the whole, this works out really great. Very pleased with it. And uh, I now have a nav station slash office.